Hello, Michael Bull here. I'm with Michael Wood with 747 Insights. We're at the 7th Annual Interface Multifamily Conference at the Weston Hotel in Buckhead. Now, you just spoke to the entire group, right? Yes. And you have a focus on millennials, and I think millennials are a big group, right? Tell us how big they are, but they're also important to all businesses, especially people in the multifamily world, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, you're absolutely right, Michael. They, they are a very large group, and they cover... A, a very important age range of 18 to 34 and if you think about it we as a society have been focused on Millennials for a long time and they've literally grown up before our very eyes and so everyone is really interested on the impact that they have on everything from uh, retail to residential where they live and what they're looking for yeah so if I manage apartment complex or I'm developing one or I'm investing in them what should I think about millennials to to help me have better relations with these tenants and, and and attract them and retain them as tenants well we need to understand some of the the key components that they're looking for things that are important to them certainly this is a generation that has been strongly impacted by the recession and so as a result there's no surprise they are looking for value they're also looking for options. They uh, are looking for flexibility. So they're a little leery about being uh, locked into, let's say, long-term leases, as an example. Uh, they, um, they're really looking for flexibility in everything, including where they live. Right. So how can we build relations with relationships with them to, to have them trust us, to have them understand that we understand their flexibility? And I think sometimes in real estate we think, oh, leases and leases got to be a year, and, and we don't like flexibility. But so what are some tips there? Well, I, I think the most important tip to keep in mind is to, to be as, as seamless and as streamlined as you possibly can be. So that means looking at everything from the application process to make sure that uh, that everything is there, everything is very clear, So, and that everything is necessary. And so maybe it's even a simple task of pulling out those applications, taking a, a, a hard look at them, and, and thinking if we really need to collect all of that information. And then also, uh, to be as transparent as possible, to make sure that uh, the rules and any restrictions are, are clear and, and, and laid out for them in a way that they understand and, and that they feel like they, there are no hidden surprises. Okay, and make them come in between nine and five in person, uh, handwrite it, press hard two copies? <laughs> yeah, not so much. And, and you bring up an interesting point because this is a generation that really expects uh, flexibility in terms of, of dealing with companies as well. And so they just inherently believe that they, if they have a question, that they should then be able to get that question answered any time of day, uh, any day of the week. And when it comes to trust from millennials trusting your company, whether you're apartment complex or something else, how much do reviews online count and what, is, what are some advice there? Well, the, re the reviews make all the difference in the world. And so uh, we, can, we can put out our own information about how great we are, what our services are, uh, what the facilities are and quite frankly what life is like from our perspective in terms of living in our properties but you can bet that uh, they are going to talk to actual people uh, their peers other residents that have had uh, an actual experience living in that community and finding out what life is is really like and I think we've all would like to have done that all of our lives and and get that uh, third party advice on on using a company but but now it's just a, a lot easier for them to get to get there and see that right they're gonna see it right when they look at your property online somewhere that's right they are gonna be able to find it and yeah. and they have really grown up with that idea just to have a natural tendency to fact check just about everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to be transparent is one of the things uh, you talked about today. So how can we be more transparent? What's that mean to, to a baby boomer like me if I own an apartment complex or something, I'm trying to be more transparent? Well, I think it, it, it really comes down to just being 
as, as open and as honest as you can. Um, I think it's also important to recognize that they have very high demands in terms of, of what they would like to see. So perhaps for uh, someone who's a boomer, maybe the idea of just providing photos online might, we might believe that that's enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to recognize that for this generation, that's not enough, that right. they just don't want to see photos, but they want to see a, a 360 view, that floor plans alone are not enough, but they need to be 3D. And then also keep in mind that they're not just interested in their unit or uh, one particular unit, but they're also interested in finding out what that community is all about too. Okay. So what would parking, parking look like for me? Mm -hmm. um, how close am I to public transportation, et cetera? So all of those details, uh, they're really keen on. And, yeah. and, and so they, they, we have to be able to present that information to them as well. All right, sounds like you're telling me you get a virtual reality <laughs> tour, 3D tour of my entire complex, not just the units, but of the parking and then really the community around it and, and what's the draw, what it's like to live there. That's right. And then also, I would say go one step further and even focus on the materials that go into the building that they are concerned. This is a generation that is concerned about um, their environmental impact on the world. And so they're really looking to align themselves with brands, companies, organizations that they feel are doing their part to make the world a better place to live uh, and address issues like the environment. And so if we have a positive track record in uh, as part of who we are as a business, th then it's important for us to let them know about that. Right. Well, that's a good point. Uh, my daughter, she wants to save the world, and I'm like, why don't you just get along in the world, right, <laughs> and to do well? Right? Yeah, and, and for this generation, it's not <laughs> enough just to get along, but they, they, they really are keen on, on making differences and being part of that difference. And so the brands that they choose to do business with, the companies that they choose to do business with, even where they live is, a, is an opportunity for them to say, hey, I'm doing my part for the short time that I'm here on this planet. Right. And you mentioned earlier that part of the reason that that they're more cost conscious uh, millennials is because they've kind of seen a downturn. And some of that downturn is they've seen their parents uh, maybe have issues with their homes, right? Values have dropped on their homes. Some of their parents may have had issues with for foreclosures even. So is that some of what's driving uh, millennials to be really more interested in the flexibility of, of leasing apartments and part of what's driving this, this market? It does yeah. because, and, and on a couple of fronts, Michael, not only because of what they've seen happen in their own lives with their immediate families, but also the fact that they really haven't figured things out yet for themselves. And so they, they may be out of school and they may be in their 20s or their 30s and, and still haven't yet figured out where they want to live or what field of, of, of work that they want to be in. And so that's another one of the drivers for, for that, that, uh, that flexibility. And do you think this, this idea for millennials to have, of wanting to have the flexibility, maybe be a renter over a, a home buyer, how long do you think that will last and how many of them will kind of continue that through life? I know there's some, used to be a day when, when you'd talk to someone and they say, yeah, you're in an apartment you feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's like, oh, you own a home? Oh, I feel so sorry for you. That's I right. rent. That's how, right. How much of that's just going to continue with this group of millennials? I think it will continue. I, I think that the, the research that we've done suggests that ultimately they do see themselves kind of settling down and, and buying property, but it's further down the road for them. And, and a lot of that is driven by kind of the, the economic situation that they have. You know, student loan debt is a, is a, is a, is a, is a real significant issue for them. And mm -hmm. as a country, the, the student loan debt is, is, a, is a nearly $1.3 trillion. And, you know, that is the monkey on their back. And so a lot of the choices that they're making right now are, are really because of the economy and, and because of their situation, but also because of the flexibility that they're looking for. Yeah, well, it makes sense. And great information, Michael. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for being here at the conference. Okay, my there. pleasure. Thanks, thanks for checking Michael. out the Commercial Real Estate Show. Don't miss a video of special interest to you. Be sure to subscribe below. 
And if you appreciate the videos, be sure and thank our sponsors. There's a link to more information about them in the description. For more videos, podcasts, and articles, check out CREshow.com.